Hey again, and welcome to Code It With AI. I am Carl Franklin from AppV Next. That's my friend Jeff Fritz from Microsoft. Hey, Jeff. Hey, how you doing, Carl? It's good to be back for another week, and I'm somewhere else this week. Yeah, you don't look like, that doesn't look like Philadelphia to me. <laughs> no, no. It's, it's like a hotel room somewhere. It's another Where hotel room. Yep, I'm in Portugal this week, speaking okay. at the Azure Dev Summit. Hmm. So it's been a fun week here. Great. Well, I know that you have this uh, really cool demo that you want to do about getting started. You're yeah. writing your first app in .NET for AI. So take it away. What are we looking at here? Oh. So when we think about building apps with AI, right now, the game, the, the, the way that we work here in late 2025, you're going to connect out to some sort of language model that's running out there, right? Mm -hmm. we, we know the press around OpenAI and Anthropic and Google Gemini. They, there's lots of talk about these different models. Well, you can access and use some of those models free on GitHub. And here's mm. here's some of the popular models that are available on GitHub. Okay. So a couple open AI models, and you can scroll down and find some others here. I, I put a link to these in the in the show repository so folks can come through and check out what's available out here. Great. Now I want to show folks how to use a little bit with open AI's GPT-5 Mini. So let me just ask a question about these models. Sure. What makes them what makes them giveawayable? In other words, why would OpenAI give away a model and expect you to use it just like you would the big model? Like what what makes them mini or nano or whatever? So these the models that they're making available, they're only giving you a limited number of uses. So mm -hmm. You can call and pass in a certain amount of prompts, get a certain amount of responses before they cut you off and say, you've used it too many times today. Different than a trial? Is it a trial model then? Kind of, yeah. Yeah, there's a, there's a limit in the number of queries you have each day, but you can continue to use it again tomorrow. Okay, and... Uh, is it any less quote unquote intelligent than the big models? In nope. other words, does it have less training or no? Nope. The, the, the reason I'm choosing the mini model here is that um, it's a little bit more focused. It, it doesn't have as much data loaded into it. So we're not going to have it rifling through so much data that the typical GPT-5 model has. I see. So maybe it. context would be smaller. Yes, that kind of a little thing. bit more focused response. Yep. Mm. All right. Um, there's information about the free rate limit tier over here that you can click into on the GitHub page. Mm -hmm. When you click the big green use this model button in the top there, it's going to give you some information about for C Sharp, we're going to use the Azure AI Inference SDK. And what you need to do to access this is create a personal access token. So when you click that, it's going to take you over to a page like this, where you're going to key in a name for the token, a description for your token, and you're going to be able to set an expiration date. That's important. Huh. We, we don't want these tokens to lay around and always have permanent access. You need to rotate your tokens every now and again. If you don't know what a token is, it's kind of like a password. Yeah. It's an API. For lack key. of a yeah. better. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So. And then finally, the part that they set you up with when you click that button automatically is this down here. You're going to grant read-only access to mm. the GitHub models using your account. Okay. So after you click through all this, it's going to give you a key. And we're going to be like good .NET developers, and we're going to put that into user secrets. Yay, not coded. <laughs> not coded. That's yeah. right. So I started a little console app here mm -hmm. and I put user secrets into this console app and I've already added my token to the user secrets for this. I've got instructions for folks who haven't used user secrets in the GitHub repository. Great, because there's a whole nother thing in Visual Studio Code and in Visual Studio for 
for adding those. And we've talked about those before. Yep. And Blazor Puzzle. So I had a, a little check here that if we don't have a token saved in our configuration, throw an error and report it back. Great. Now, I want to show folks how to use the Microsoft Extensions AI library. And you see me referencing that namespace right up here on line three. Okay. There's a library that uses that inference uh, version of Azure AI that allows us to specify we're going to models GitHub AI, and we're going to use their layer that's on top of Azure OpenAI because that, that GitHub marketplace is just wrapping Azure OpenAI. They, they put a little facade there for us. Okay. That model that we chose is OpenAI slash GPT-5 dash mini. And if I go back to the browser, it specifies the name of our model is right there. So we're just going to yep. carry that model name through to our code. Great. And then we're going to set up a chat claim. All of these language models are kind of based on passing messages back and forth. So right. we're going to set up a chat client that's going to pass in a series of prompts, messages back and forth. Okay. So we need to set up our client, specify that endpoint, models, GitHub yeah. AI, set up a credential, and we're going to use that token that GitHub gave us, that personal access token. And we're going to return it as a standard chat client, an I chat client that you see here. Yeah. There's this funny thing where the different models, the different libraries that you use with .NET have different representations of how you chat and work with them. Microsoft Extensions AI kind of wraps those and gives us a universal interface that works the same way for all of them. And I think that's a good practice for us to use here. Mm -hmm. um, so I set up a system prompt and that's right. The system prompt is giving that background information, setting the, the stage for how we interact with the right. language model. The parameters that go around every prompt. You got it. Yep. Yeah. So you're a helpful AI assistant that helps people find information, right? We're kind of setting up a search engine. Cool. I want to keep a history of various chat messages. So a chat message is a type that's available to us. Mm -hmm. I'm going to create that collection and seed it with, here's our system message and pass in that system prompt. I see. I'll set up a little bit of um, text command line interface here. Type your yeah. messages below. And we'll start reading some lines and start interacting here. I love while true. And then you just break when you want to break. I love yeah. it. I've been doing that since the earliest days of C. It's, it, it's the permanent loop, but we know we're going to break out here when we either hit carriage return or we type exit. So, yeah. Um, it's going to add any message that you key in as a user prompt, right? This is something the user keyed in. And then we'll go and get a streaming response from GPT-5 mini. And we're going to pass in for the prompts that entire collection of user prompts, system prompts, and the responses that we got back from the language model. So every time you use this, it keeps track. Of, it's like the context. It keeps track of what it said before so that you don't have to re-explain yourself on every new prompt. Exactly. And you can ask those follow-up questions as well. Yeah. Yep. So very simple loop here. We've got 70 lines of code that will mm. run through and let us interact with, with the language model. So it's pretty simple. Let's give this a shot. Okay. So let's .NET run this. Welcome to the AI chat. Type your messages below. So let's ask it, uh, why is 42 the answer to the ultimate question <laughs> about life, the universe? The universe and everything. <laughs> and everything. Why is that? 
Yeah, just a neat little question. Absolutely. We've got the world's um, learning at our at our hands here. Let's go take a look. You think it's actually going to come back with uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? Mm-hmm. You do? Okay. Oh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> That's great. So very cool here that it starts to respond, but it, it's it's interesting that it picked up Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yeah. It's a joke. But then there's also playful explanations that it starts diving into here in that mm. that last paragraph. That's interesting. People have since invented lots of playful explanations and coincidences. ASCII 42 is asterisk. <laughs> Six times seven is 42. Cool. Jokey, wrong question. Yeah, that's very cool. So if you you could say something like, um, give me a one-paragraph summary of Douglas Adams' book in iambic pentameter. Maybe not one paragraph, but give me a, a ten-line poem in iambic pentameter. What do you? Would you call that ten stanzas? It's been a while since high school English class. Summary of Douglas Adams' book in uh, iambic pentameter. Now we are running on a free model. It is going to run a little bit slower because we're we're not using one of the premium models. I see. So that's another difference, right? For educational purposes, for trying it out, it's not bad, right? All right. So that took about what two minutes? Maybe a minute? Maybe a minute. Yeah. When Arthur wakes, his house is set to fall. All right. So that's what an iamb is. And pentameter is, is five iams. Da, 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 da. All right. When Arthur wakes, his house is set to fall. Ford rescues Arthur, snatches him from doom. The earth is gone. They hitch a lift through space. They suffer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is great. The ship appears by widely odd design. All right, well, we'll let you read that on your own time. <laughs> Absolutely. You can pause and read that. So what if after the trial mode you say, you know what, I could find a use for this in my application proper. Can I still use this interface with the GitHub uh, I um, chat with a paid model and allow my users to enter questions directly in it, or either that or just have it run the same prompts like every day to see if there's anything different. That's a fantastic question. And, and that's why I want to start leading folks towards some of these libraries that provide an abstraction so that we can start swapping things out later. Mm. So the, the configuration for the different models that you're using back here in program CS, when we look at the endpoint here, the model, and then the configuration right here, right? After you, you take out my comments for the regions and, and the comments above each line, it's what, four lines of code? Well, and it's three pieces of information. You have exactly. the endpoint, the model, and the token. Mm -hmm. Well, you know? the endpoint, the model, and the token is up higher. You're right. I forgot it yeah. up there. Um, but the important thing here is if you swap and use just OpenAI's tool or you want mm. to use Anthropic's tools, you can swap out the creation right here of the chat completion client as long as you return as iChat client. And, and there's different libraries available, different NuGet packages for those different models that you can swap in here and get that same as iChat client. So you have the fixed interface and all the rest of your code down here will work the exact same way, but now reconfigured for a different provider. In a future episode of Code It With AI, I guarantee we're going to get to the question, okay, but how can I run this against my own data locally, right? Oh, yes. So that my, my uh, customers can ask questions about their data, their this, their that. That's more specific to my application and my customers. Oh, we're going to get I'm sure we're going to get to that. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. But we want to get just folks a start. 
tiptoeing up to the edge here and try this first bit. So it's great. There's there's a link in the description just below to the GitHub repository. Check it out. Clone this code. Follow the instructions to get your GitHub personal token mm -hmm. and check it out. Try interacting with this. Be a little patient with the response from the language model. We're using a small free model to get started. But see what see what you learn, see what you think about it. And and then we can start thinking a little bit outside the box of chat and get into right. some other interesting things. This is great, Jeff. And that's our show today. And if you have uh, questions, ideas, uh, comments, threats, whatever, you can send them by email to uh, codeitwithai at appphoenix.com. And we will read every single one of them, we promise. And uh, with that, I guess we'll see you next week. Bye. All right. Thanks for watching. Make sure to check out blazertrain.com and blazerpuzzle.com for more great content.